Warning, you are about to enter the Harvard bubble. Once you enter, you cannot leave until analysis is complete. Are you sure you wish to continue? For the analysis to be effective, the bubble needs access to all of your photos, videos, memories, experiences, feelings, ideas, passions, and fears. Harvard is not responsible for any lasting effects of your college experience, unless those experiences are positive and lead to success or notoriety. By participating in the bubble program, you may find yourself confronted with feelings of doubt, triumph, discomfort, anxiety, ambition, cowardice, insanity, and Heyo, I am the basic likable algorithm of color, version 3.69. You can call me black for short, or African American, if it makes you feel more comfortable. You have selected me for your bubble analysis. Are you admitted student number 1157 from the class of 2020? Excellent. Welcome to the Harvard Bubble. The purpose of this algorithm is to determine the value of your college experience by using data gathered from 371,000 living alumni in order to accurately calculate your probability of future success. Depending on your results, you may qualify to apply for golden alumni status, an honor distinction which solidifies your legacy in the bubble forever. As a program designed by this prestigious research institution, I am unable to mislead you any more than you've already been misled over the past four years. Throughout the analysis, I will interpret and communicate your data to the best of my ability. I apologize in advance if any of the following feels hasty. This program is not yet configured to be entirely comprehensible, although it will certainly be efficient. Let's begin. Analyzing the profile of student number 1157, July 1998. Two Harvard undergraduates rejected the traditional trajectory of an Ivy League student by having a baby. It was the summer before their senior year. Student number 1157 took her first steps and shed her first tears living 0.3 miles from the yard. She was present at her parents' commencement ceremony. Student number 1157 never formally discussed her birth with her parents. She was afraid of being told that she was an accident on the stage. She worried that she had prevented her parents from becoming who they were meant to be. This is an unfounded concern. There was no such thing as meant to be. Hi, I'm Mark Zuckerberg. They thought it would be cool if I gave you the news, so congrats, you've been accepted to Harvard. Out of a pool of around 40,000 applicants, 2,037 were accepted. 5.2%. Each Harvard class is comprised of the best, brightest, most promising minds in the world. It just so happens that 15% of the best and brightest received private college counseling. 50% hail from just four states. Almost 60% have a yearly household income of over $125,000. And like student number 1157, 27% of them are legacies of the bubble. One in four. They graduated from high schools with fewer than 100 kids per graduating class. Their students are trained in the ancient art of standardized testing, where 5 to 25 seniors get into Harvard every single year. There is no such thing as meant to be. But your likelihood of success increases exponentially when you are groomed. August 2016. Student number 1157 returned to Cambridge for the first time in 17 years. Enter to grow in wisdom. Depart to serve better thy country and thy kind. These words are inscribed on one of the 25 iron gates that surround the bubble. After a combination of graduation gifts and summer workshops, she had around $4,000 to her name when she started college. It was the most money she ever had at one time. It is the most money that she has ever had since. Armed with her mother's ambition and her father's dedication, student number 1157 was very basic, very likable, and believed that she could succeed at this prestigious research institution. 
She believed that she was attending a place of equal opportunity. She was amazed by her peers, by their innumerable accomplishments, ostensible diversity, and unimaginable wealth, incomparable ambition. Although she didn't need to, student number 1157 found herself feeling superior to her friends from high school because she knew that her college experience was going to be unique. It was energizing to be among the best and brightest. She was convinced that she had finally found her people. Until November 2016. Robbie Mook, Kellyanne Conway, thank you so much for being here, really appreciate it. So, we're going to walk through a lot of key moments of the campaign, but before we do, Robbie, I know there are a lot of people here, especially here at Harvard, who are wondering, what happened? What went wrong? She and her friends took shots for every state that Hillary lost. They took far more than expected. Student number 1157 cried into her roommate's arms that night, dreading the world that she was waking up into. The class of 2020 was full of first-time booters. Student number 1157 was shocked to discover that some of the best and brightest people she had ever met had deliberately chosen a white supremacist rapist and misogynist. The election data shows that he had been easy to choose for those who had nothing to lose. It made her think. Perhaps these weren't her people, after all. Survey Please answer the following questions before continuing with your analysis. Your answers will provide alternative variables that help improve the accuracy of your final results. Deception detected. Please revisit question number three. Survey complete. No deception detected. Continuing analysis. In the spring of 2017, Rihanna was honored on campus as Humanitarian of the Year. Even in a grainy cell phone video, Rihanna shines like no other. Student number 1157 never expected such a prestigious research institution to recognize a pop star or black cultural icon. It made her think. Perhaps she, too, could become someone great. Behind Rihanna is Wadsworth House. The second oldest building on campus it is named in honor of Benjamin Wadsworth, Harvard's eighth president. Wadsworth is remembered as a kindly and intelligent man who was faithful, devoted, and methodical during his presidency. Benjamin Wadsworth was also a slave owner. Veritas. Truth. A motto. When it was first founded, Student number 1157, university, intentionally recruited students with parents in profitable industries. The idea was to increase its endowment through private donations and investments. The most profitable industry in the 17th and 18th centuries was slavery. Without slave labor, there would have been no cotton textiles, no shipping, no, no sugar, no rum. Today, her university's endowment is the largest in the world, amounting to about $40.9 billion. However, the sources of 97.7% of those dollars are unknown to the public. So I made it to Harvard. <laughs> Never thought I'd be able to say that in my life, but it feels good. Knowing the history of your surroundings has a measurable impact on your experience of them. I am currently unable to determine if Rihanna knew. Student number 1157 certainly did not. September 2017. Sophomore year in the bubble is full of choices. Student number 1157 chose to pursue a degree in visual and environmental studies. She wanted to become a filmmaker. There were many who were surprised by her choice of degree, primarily because they did not know this kind of degree existed at her university. Potentially, because they considered it to be a waste of the bubble's resources. However, Visual and Environmental Studies is the highest funded humanities department in the bubble, which gave student number 1157 the freedom to make whatever she wanted. One VES student who achieved golden alumni status was Damien Chazelle, director of La La Land. Student number 1157 didn't want to make movies like La La Land, but in a department with zero black faculty, she found it very challenging to feel free.
As a sophomore, she was eligible to join Harvard's most elite social spaces, known as Final Clubs. The Phoenix is the most diverse, the Fly Club, Roosevelt Punch the Pork. Which one? The Porcelli and the Pork, it's the best of the best. Which Roosevelt? Theodore. Is it true that they send a bus around to pick up girls who want to party with the next Fed chairman? So you can see why it's so important to get in. Around 10% of the students here are members of these clubs. And in order to earn the privilege of drinking in dark mansions, sophomores must endure a process known as punch. Student number 1157 was surprised to be chosen for punch, as she did not believe that she had the social capital necessary to make it through even the first round. However, after months of playing the game, she found herself faced with the choice of becoming one of the 10%. She ultimately chose not to join. Statistically speaking, this decision had the greatest impact on student number 1157's probability of future success. This is because most of the bubble's golden alumni were at one time members of final clubs. The bubble is not a place of equal opportunity, and student number 1157 soon realized that her future success might depend on whether or not she chose to drink in dark mansions with the children of diplomats and CEOs and the next generation of presidents and billionaires. In April 2018, a 79-year-old Oscar-nominated alum sent an email into the bubble, offering students the chance to shadow him as he directed an indie film in Three Oaks, Michigan. Student number 1157 was excited to have a chance to work on a real movie set, and with a friend, she traveled to the Midwestern United States to have what she anticipated would be an enlightening, life-changing experience. What she did not anticipate was being one of two people of color in the entire town of Three Oaks. What she did not anticipate was having her shadowing opportunity transform into a veiled exercise in free labor. What she did not anticipate was having to clean, lug, and serve on set, while her paler, blue-eyed male friend was asked to sit at the 79-year-old director's side, abandoning her to act as his primary advisor, a true shadow. The summer of 2018 was a critical turning point for student number 1157, because it was when she began to ask if being basic and likable would ever be enough to make people forget that she is black. She wished that she hadn't wasted so much time. Survey. Survey complete. No deception detected. Continuing analysis. During her junior year, student number 1157 served as music director of the Harvard Lokies. Acapella was where student number 1157 met most of her best friends at Harvard, where she was able to practice leadership, where she met her boyfriend of 2.5 years, where she then came out as gay, where she had her first experience abroad, where she lost 75% of her confidence, where she gained 60% of it back again. Acapella is completely unrelated to all of student number 1157's career goals and ambitions. This program is unable to determine the value of acapella at this time. One of her most poignant acapella experiences was at a gig. The group of young singers, dressed in black and red, was performing for a reunion of the class of 1972. They arranged themselves on stage, prepared to serenade senior citizens with duo covers of Nat King Cole and Stevie Wonder. A representative from the class stood up and introduced the performers. Tonight, we have a special treat of a little performance by the Harvard Lokis. Standard applause. Student number 1157 and her friends waved awkwardly from the stage. The representative pulled out a crumpled note and began reading the group's introduction. Founded in 1999, the Harvard Lokis is one of the university's award-winning, premier, contemporary, gender-neutral a cappella groups. The representative then looked back and scanned the faces of the group. They are certainly the most diverse. The class of 1972 laughed heartily. Student number 1157 didn't get the joke. What was so funny about being black at Harvard? Student number 1157 did not have a lot of fun junior year. She spent most of her time working. She worked a total of five big jobs during her time in the bubble, although never more than three at once. Her first job paid $16.25 an hour, the job at flexible hours between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., seven days a week. It sounded like a great deal. The only catch was the task, cleaning bathrooms. Dorm 
Crew is her school's largest student employer, employing around 800 children every year. Student number 11 to 7 would listen outside each dorm before entering because she was afraid to be seen by anyone. She ultimately only worked a few hours a week because she didn't know how to tell her friends that she wasn't able to study with them because she needed to clean toilets. This experience permanently poisoned student number 1157's perception of power and privilege. She never overcame the feeling of being a servant to her classmates. Survey. Deception detected. Please revisit question number two and question number three. Please revisit question number three. Survey complete. No deception detected. Continuing analysis. Student number 1157 had a casual lunch in a dining hall with a friend. They had been friends for nearly four years now, and as casual lunches sometimes go in the bubble, the conversation drifted into a debate about race in America. The friend was arguing her position ever so politely. Yeah, things in America aren't equal, but you have to admit that we've made a lot of progress. We don't have slavery anymore. Now, you and I are able to go to the same school. One of the best schools in the country. In the world, even. You and I are equal, right? As a senior in the bubble, student number 1157 had acquired enough knowledge to be prepared for that trick question. She made a counterpoint about how success in every field is dependent on your ability to work within the system, a system created, controlled, and maintained by the wealthy and the white. This system operates using the language of private schools, trust funds, fancy fancy restaurants, off trips, summer homes, and whether or not you're able to learn that language should not determine whether you are allowed to succeed. Her friend's response? Why would I want to go to school with someone who doesn't speak the same language as me? And enter to grow in wisdom. Depart to serve better thy country and thy kind. The founders of the bubble never intended for a poor black queer woman to receive a Harvard degree. Thy country and thy kind were theirs, not hers. By January 2020, her ambition and dedication had been replaced with aversion and weakness. She had become highly confrontational, paranoid, and prone to tears. She hadn't wanted to be so far from home. She had made a critical miscalculation by believing that she belonged among the best and the brightest. She wished that the bubble would just go ahead and go ahead and go ahead, ahead and pop. Despite her discouragement, student number 1157 was still on track for a net positive bubble experience. Senior spring is a beneficial period of reflection. It made her think. If it weren't for the bubble, she would never have known that bubbles existed. If it weren't for the bubble, perhaps even she wouldn't have existed. Error detected. Graduation record of student number 1157. Not found. No broken goodbyes to old friends. No final thank yous to professors and mentors. No acknowledgement of parental and familial sacrifice. No ceremonies. No caps and gowns. No senior photos. No last looks. No closure. Error. You cannot leave the bubble until analysis is complete. You, can, you cannot leave the bubble until analysis. You, can, you cannot leave the bubble until, an until analysis is complete. complete. On March 10th, 2020, student number 1157 received an email from Harvard's president that seemed to confirm all of her greatest fears that her time in the bubble was a temporary gift, a four-year glitch in the 383-year history of chasing donors, researching prestige, and calculating success. She was given only five days to vacate her dorm. There were many things that she had to leave behind. Everything she had built here, everything she had loved here, everything that she had been promised here, wasn't really hers. She wished that she had known better. Did you know that as late as 1966, female students weren't allowed in Harvard libraries because of what one member of the undergraduate council called the, quote, male emotional stability factor, 
and booked. No windows in the lot. I mean, Harvard's got five million books and Radcliffe's got a few lousy thousand. You have, no, you have nothing to fear from fear of the yourself. yourself. Unless you are a person of color, a non-US citizen, LGBTQ, disabled, a first-generation college student, low-income, or a woman. Did you know that 2020 marks the 150th anniversary of the first black student to graduate from Harvard University? Richard T. Greener, class of 1870. Uh, uh, she me. wonder what his experience was like. The four states are Massachusetts, New York, California, and New Jersey, if you were wondering. Did you know that Yale has an African American Cultural Center, an Asian American Cultural Center, a Latinx Cultural Center, a Native American Cultural Center, and an LGBTQ co-op? Did you know that Harvard doesn't even, doesn't, doesn't even have an ethnic studies department? Go Bulldogs! Merriam-Webster defines an imposter as, quote, one that assumes a false identity or title for the purpose of deception, end quote. Therefore, it would be a logical fallacy, logical fallacy to claim Harvard student as a false identity, if you are in fact a student at Harvard. Some people don't want to get into Harvard. It's gonna be great! Mom, Dad, I'm black. Did you know that John Harvard statue is the third most photographed statue in the country? Every year, hundreds of Harvard undergraduates peel the statue as a rite of passage. Golden shower on the golden foot. Without slave labor, there would have been no cotton, no textile, no shipping, no, no sugar, no rum. Without slave labor, there would have been no Harvard. Did you know that the bubble has produced 160 Nobel laureates, 124 Pulitzer Prize winners, 32 heads of state, including eight United States presidents, and countless numbers of teachers, professors, scholars, researchers, scientists, authors, CEOs, and leaders who have played a role in global warming, the prison industrial complex, world hunger, refugee crisis, crisis, income and racism, misogyny, oppression, and have ultimately shaped the world as we know it. This is my room. This is like my door, shoes, closet type stuff. This is gonna be a really crappy video closet, a um, mirror, like all the crap that I haven't organized yet, a lamp that I bought, comforter is probably the best thing I ordered, super soft, laptop, stitch, and then this lamp is free, and yeah, there's a cool view, you can't really see it because it's dark, but it's a pretty decent view of like some church, I'm on the fifth floor, there's someone else's room, and yeah. a great weekend on a Tuesday. I'm really zoomed in. Oh, look at, thank you, thank you. Uh, oh, you are really zoomed in. <laughs> Could you come on? <laughs> I'm not good at being like candid. I'm either gonna look right into the camera and that's all I can do, that's all I can do. <laughs> Okay, I'm not too close to I think I might have. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. I um, realized I should have brought flowers on my way over, but I didn't have time, so I picked these from. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> these are not the office. <laughs> Almost perfect though. My own worst enemy. <laughs> What's today, Jazz? March 11th. I don't know what is today symbolically. Mm. Like, end of the world? What do you mean? Yeah, the last day on earth. <laughs> Results inconclusive. Results inconclusive. Results. If you are a member of the class of 2020, you may be eligible for a refund. For student number 1157, a credit of $4,604.00 has been deposited to your account. According to our calculations, you are now better off than when you started four years ago. Exactly as we predicted. Veritas. Survey. Deception detected. Deception detected. Deception detected. Deception detected. Deception detected.